Hello my dear friends, I am Sujoy and today in this video I will tell you how to solve a degenerate transportation problem by stepping stone method. So this is our question and our given cost is 675. We have to find out the optimal transportation cost. So for some basics, this is called a transportation problem and this matrix is called the cost matrix and this individual cell values represents the transportation cost. We have three origins O1, O2 and O3 and five destinations D1, D2, D3, D4 and D5. So if we transport one units of goods from origin O1 to destination D1, our transportation cost is 19. That may be 19 rupees or 19 dollars anything. But if we transport one units of goods from origin 1 to destination D4, our cost of transportation reduces to 12. So our objective is to transport goods from 3 origins to 5 destinations in such a manner so that our total transportation cost is minimum. Next, these outside vertical values are called the supply values and these horizontal outside values are called the demand values. That means in origin 1, we have total supply or total capacity of 7 units of goods. Similarly, in origin 2, we have total capacity of 10 units of goods. So for D1, the total demand is of 5 units of goods. Similarly, for D2, the total demand is of 8 units of goods. So our objective is to fulfill all the demands by all the supplies with minimum transportation cost. So this was the basic. Let's proceed to the solution. So here, number of allocations are 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, which is not equals to m plus n minus 1, where m is the number of rows, we have 3 rows, 1, 2, 3, and n is the number of columns, we have 5 columns. So m plus n minus 1 equals to 7, but our number of allocations are 6, 1 less than that. So they are not equal. So it's a degenerate transportation problem. To remove the degeneracy, we have to increase our allocation by one. But we can't randomly allocate to any cell. For example, if we allocate one units of goods at cell O1 D4, that is at this 12 value, so our cost of transportation will increase by one into 12 by 12 units. But our objective is to minimize the transportation cost. To remove the degeneracy, we have to allocate epsilon, an infinitesimally small quantity to the smallest unallocated cell value. So our smallest unallocated cell value is 0, 1, 0 at this position, O1, D5 position and 1 at O3, D5 position. So since here is a tie, we can go with anyone or arbitrarily. So we will go with this cell, O3, D5. So we will put an epsilon at O3 D5 position. So after putting an epsilon at O3 D5 position, our new matrix becomes this and everything remains the same. Next we will solve it by stepping stone method. So in stepping stone method, what you basically do, we make closed loop for each unallocated cell. These cells are called unallocated cells, for example, O1 D2 having value 30, O1 D4 having value 12, like that. So what is a loop? A loop is a path which starts from an unallocated cell and travels over the allocated cells throughout the matrix and ends at the same cell from which it was originated. So there are some rules for forming a loop. Rule number one, the loop must start and end from an unallocated cell that is it's a closed loop second rule is loop can go horizontally and vertically but not diagonally rule number three along the path of loop we cannot have three or more than three adjacent allocated cell for example if you have one allocated cell at this position o3 d3 position at value 60 then we couldn't draw a loop because then we'll have three adjoint allocated cells one at this position one at this position and one at this position 
So now as we have got the rule for the loop, let's make a loop. So our first loop will start from the first unallocated cell that is O1, D2. And rule number 2 says that at each corner point of rule, there must be an allocated cell. So we start from this cell, we'll go downward to our first allocated cell. Next, we'll go this side, our next allocated cell. Then we'll go upward, next this side, again upward and coming back to our ordinated cell. So we have formed a closed loop starting and ending at the same cell and that cell is an unallocated cell. Also at each corner point of loop we have an allocated cell and third we don't have any three allocated cell along the path of loop. So this loop satisfies all the three conditions. So it's a perfect loop. And in stepping stone method, there is another rule that our first cell we consider as plus cell and our next cell we consider as minus cell and our next cell we consider as plus cell and next minus plus minus and then come back to original cell. That is in plus and minus alternate order. Next we will find out the numerical value for this loop which is given by 30 minus 10 plus 0 minus 0 plus 40 minus 50 that is equals to this that is equals to plus 10. One more thing it is called stepping stone method because its allocated cells are called the stone square or stone cells and unallocated cells are called water square or water cells. So basically what we do it traverse by stepping to the stone square avoiding the water. That is why it is called stepping stone method. We are jumping from one stone to another stone to another stone to go back to our original cell. That is why it is called stepping stone method. Isn't it cool to know? So we will head to our next loop. So it can be given by 12 minus 50 plus 40 minus 0 plus 0 minus 20 and coming to our original cell. So that is given by so that is equals to minus 18. Notice here we have got a minus sign. That means if we go with this alternation we can reduce our transportation cost by minus 18 units. That is a good sign. Next we will form loop for O1 D5 cell which is given by 0 minus 50 plus 40 minus 0 and closing it. So that is equals to minus 10. Again we have got a minus sign that means we can consider this change with a decrease of 10 units in our transportation cost. Notice in stepping stone method we don't consider any cell which is not a corner cell but comes in the line of loop. For example this 10 we, we are not considering in our calculation. So we have got all our loops. Next we will consider all these values. If all these values are positive then our current solution is optimal and we don't need any further optimality test and our current transportation cost is the optimal transportation cost. But if we get any of this value as negative then our current solution is not optimal and we have to find out the optimal transportation cost by doing few more calculations. And in our question we have got two negative signs one as minus 18 and one as minus 10. So we will go with the most negative value. So our most negative value is the minus 18 which is at O1 D4 cell. So we will consider this loop in our next calculation. How? I will show you. So we will make a loop starting from O1 D4. So O1 D4 to O1 D3 to O2 D3 to O2 D5 to O3 D5 to O3 D4 and going back to our original cell. So we will do some alterations. 
So remember our first cell or our originating cell is plus or positive, next cell negative, again positive, negative, positive and negative. So next we will consider all the allocation values along the path of loop. So along the path of loop the allocations are 2, 5, 5, epsilon which is a very small number and plus 10 and we will take the minimum allocation value. So minimum allocation value is 2 and since this is a plus cell so, so we will allocate 2 at this position. So pre now there is no allocation but in our next table we will allocate 2. Next cell is negative so we will subtract 2 from the present allocation. The present allocation is 2, 2 minus 2 that is equals to 0. So this allocation is deleted. Next cell is plus. So we will add 2 to present allocation. So present allocation is 5, 5 plus 2 is 7. Next cell is minus. So 5 minus 2 is 3. Next cell is plus. So presently there is epsilon. That is almost no value. So we will allocate 2 here. And finally, is a negative cell, so we will subtract 2 from 10, so it will become 8. So all our allocation is done, so we have got our new cost matrix or our new basic feasible solution. Again, we will perform the same looping operation on this cost matrix also. So our first unallocated cell is O1D2, so for this cell we will do the same calculation again, so which is given by 30 minus 12 plus 20 minus 10 and closing it so that is equals to plus 28 similarly for o1d3 it will be 50 minus 12 plus 20 minus 0 plus 0 plus minus 40 and closing it so that is equals to plus 18 Similarly, performing the same operation for all unrequited values, so you will get these values. You can pause the video at this position if you need this calculation. I am going to the next page. So since all the values are positive, the solution is optimal. So the optimal transportation cost is given by 5 into 19 because we have allocated 5 units of goods at the cost of 19 per unit. So for this cell, the transportation cost becomes 5 into 19 plus 2 into 12 plus 7 into 40 plus 3 into 0 plus 8 into 10 plus 8 into 20 plus 2 into 0 so which is equals to 639. Previously, our cost was given 675. And we have reduced it to 639. So the reduction in transportation cost is 675 minus 639, which is equal to 36 unit. So by stepping stone method, we have reached to our optimal solution and we have reduced our transportation cost by 36 unit. Isn't it cool? So friends, this was my video on how to solve a degenerate problem by stepping stone method. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you like this video, please like it using the like button below and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. By subscribing, you can stay connected with me and get regular updates from me. Just whenever I upload my next video, you will get an email if you subscribe. And please share this video among your friends and family because knowledge is meant to be shared. You can watch my other operations research videos like on Vocal approximation method, matrix minimum method, not wise corner method, modified distribution method or modi method, simplex method, assignment problem etc. The link to my operation research playlist is given in the video description below. It takes lots of effort to make a video like this. So please appreciate my effort by liking and sharing the video. So thanks for watching. See you in my next video. And still then stay connected by subscribing.